can I create a platform that really will impact the future of our young people? Can I create an opportunity um, to change what role models look like, to change what leaders look like on a national scale? Can I, can I have an impact? Can we, you know, do something that is kind of monumental in its effect? You know, I'd like to be able to sit down one day, turn on the television and see a group of guys who came through our program that aren't spiking a ball, that aren't committing crimes or, you know, that are doing things the right way. And we can say, man, we had a part in that. Since 2009, Junior Rank Sports has hosted a number of football training camps for young athletes. Junior Rank not only trains them to be better players, but also has an online media outlet which helps these athletes get seen by colleges. On January 3rd, 2012, Junior Rank Sports hosted the very first Semper Fidelis All-American Bowl. The bowl invites the most talented athletes from across the country to play off in Phoenix, Arizona in a game between the best of the East and the best of the West. However, in order to be invited to this game, the athletes had to bring more to the table than just their athletic ability. These athletes in this game were also chosen because of their performance in the classroom, their involvement in their communities, as well as their outstanding athletic abilities. During the week of the Semper Fidelis Bowl, Junior Rank also hosted the Junior Academic All-American Game for middle school athletes and the Proving Ground Combine for other high school athletes. Junior Rank is sponsored by a number of organizations, including their title sponsor, the United States Marine Corps. But the Marine Corps isn't so interested in the football side of Junior Rank, and neither is Junior Rank CEO Sean Barry, because there's a bigger story behind this game and a bigger story behind Junior Rank Sports. While we're here and we're talking about football, I have your attention. I can talk to you about other things and I can influence you regarding things that have nothing to do with football, about being a great man. I care less, I care less if they decide that they're gonna enlist or become an officer. What I care about is somebody becoming a good citizen. You know, I met some, some Marines this, this past week and it changed, it changed my life. For me, football changed my life. It saved my life. And I think that football opens a lot of opportunities for kids and to be a part of that and to teach them about, because kids can very easily, with their talent, go in the wrong direction. I talked to a parent the other day. A parent said she was in tears after the practice yesterday to just see that her son is getting the opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, just to talk to the parents, I mean, it, it, it's an experience that, you know, I'm just grateful to be a part of. My vision is that, that we really can do a great service by parents and athletes by giving them a credible opportunity to showcase their skills, but at the same time, helping them to understand, particularly at a young age, the things that are important. This week's game is called Influencing the Influencers. The way that we're rewarding and recognizing these young men, in my opinion, will change a nation. And I say that because we're looking at a young man's athletic ability. And for years, you know, hundreds of years, athletics and, and the, the ability to run and jump and catch and all those things have been so valued by our society. But what's oftentimes gotten lost is kind of the character behind the guy right, that's running and jumping and catching. And so uh, what we're trying to do that we think is very unique is still hold true to those athletic characteristics, but we are making uh, as a part of that selection process who they are as young men uh, academically, in their communities, in their homes. And those things are important in our minds in terms of kind of selecting that athlete to compete in this game. So I don't know if we're changing a nation with a game, but what we are doing is we are impacting what tomorrow's role models look like. 
we know that these young men are going to be playing on Saturdays next year, uh, the big colleges, and everybody's going to watch them on television. And then some of them on Sundays, uh, where you know young boys will be wearing their jerseys, right, uh, and trying to go out in the backyard and be like them. Well, we want to change and shape what those young men look like, so that when people um, idolize them, if they choose to do that, um, that the person that they're looking up to is a well-rounded person, not just the guy that can run or catch. Anytime you accept a position uh, in a league, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, you accept automatically the inherent responsibility to be um, not only a role model, but a positive role model uh, to those young men and women that are uh, definitely going to look up to you. And so uh, I feel like the professional part uh, is being overlooked an awful lot uh, in, today's, in today's athletic scene. There is nothing that gives me greater pleasure than to know that when you guys go on to play on Saturdays uh, next year, and maybe even Sundays, a couple of years after that, that you men are the next generation of role models. Um, Sean does not allow the kids to sag their pants and to act disrespectfully. And things that you see that seem to be common and fun and hip, um, they're not common and fun and hip here. Developing character is all about input, okay? What are you reading? What are you watching? I see you all with the headphones on. What music are you listening to? Do you expect to be able to develop solid moral character if the music that you're listening to is garbage? Do you, be a, do you think that you're gonna develop solid moral character if the movies that you're watching are the computer website that you're at if you hear somebody coming, you have to turn it off really quickly. You know when I went to the Dallas Cowboys? They go, I only have a little question for you. You got in a fight in the seventh grade. What was it? Why? And I had to explain. I said, I need to know I got in a fight in seventh grade. And it was, uh, you know, seventh grade. We're just kids. Somebody put somebody harder than the other one and we just started fighting whatever. I couldn't even tell. I said, I don't even know. They're probably kidding around. I did ask him. I said, why? Because we check up on every single thing you've done. We don't hold you against it. We'll ask you. Because what? guess why? They're getting ready to invest millions and millions of dollars out there. They want to make sure you get along with other players. They want to make sure you get along with the media. They want to make sure you get along with the fans. You guys remember right now, anything you do right now, from walking outside this room to anywhere else, their eyes on you. You should be very proud of yourselves for being here because we didn't select just anybody to come and play football this weekend. We didn't just look at a name and go, that guy's big or that guy's strong. We asked you to bring your report cards. We asked about your character. We asked your coaches about your character and the way that you carried yourself. So you're here because you've been selected as the next generation of great student athletes. Two years ago, my wife wrote me a letter on a sticky note. It says, with God, all things are possible. And at that time, we did a camp for about 37 kids. But I said, my dream and I believe that my purpose is to speak to young men all over the country so that the influencers, the guys that are cool, the guys that are going to the big sport colleges, the guys that, that, that everybody looks up to, the guys that everybody wants to emulate, could influence the next group of influencers, the young guys, the guys with the beat headphones, the guys that everybody's walking around in the middle schools that want to be like, and that we could create this circle of men who eventually turn out to be the role models. And it's all meant to be a ministry. I don't care nothing about the football. I'm gonna enjoy your games. I'm gonna come out and watch and I'm gonna cheer. But the reality is in 10 years, if you walk up to somebody and ask them what the score of your game is, they probably not gonna remember. I'm just being real. And they might not even care. But the quality of young man that you are in 10 years, the quality of, as a father or a husband or a doctor or a lawyer, or if you go on to play in the NFL, what communities you reach back to, those are the things that are gonna matter in 10 years.
you know, I'd like to be able to sit down one day, turn on the television and see a group of guys who came through our program that aren't spiking the ball, that aren't, you know, committing crimes or, you know, that, that are doing things the right way. And we can say, man, we had a part in that. Um, but it's a challenge. It's a challenge for a number of reasons. Um, you know, I, I, I grow concerned because I think that not everybody wants that. Um, I grow concerned because, you know, it's not a very diverse industry. Um, you know, last time I checked, I don't think there are any African American CEOs that are, you know, trying to do anything like that. And so it's, it's sometimes it's made life difficult. I'm going to tell you this. Factual data says that 70% of Hispanic kids, males, drop out of high school. 65% of African American kids, males, drop out of high school. That's a, that's a recipe for failure. That is a recipe for failure. So what you're doing is that you're setting in motion successful men who are going to go out and do great things because you're still in character, integrity, and academic excellence. So we're on the same groundwork, at least on the same floor, and trying to make this nation a better nation. That's all I'm at. The Marine Corps represents America. You, you ask about minority leaders, and the Marine Corps wants all leaders. Um, because diversity in the membership of the Marine Corps brings diversity of thought. It makes us better prepared, better equipped to handle the myriad of situations that we're going to face um, both in a garrison state at home and abroad uh, when we go forward. And so we believe that our Corps has to be representative of the nation that we serve because it only makes us stronger in our thought and it makes us more connected to the society that we serve. You know, my uncle was a Marine and he served in Vietnam and he lost uh, a limb and a good portion of his face. Uh, and he, when he returned from, from Vietnam and was in the hospital, I think for almost over a year um, and has had a number of surgeries. When he left the hospital, you know, there were certain restaurants he couldn't even eat in because he was African American. Um, you know, here's a guy that was willing to fight and die for a country that wasn't really willing to sell, serve him a meal. Um, and so, you know, now fast forward 40 years later, here I am as a young African American CEO, partnered with the very same Marine Corps that, um, you know, was the last to integrate. You know, in a few days here, we're going to have military jets fly over a stadium, and we're going to cheer together and celebrate together. It makes me think that, you know, dreams are possible and that there, there is an actual opportunity for that vision to come true, and I'm thankful. I came on board about a month before the command. The Marine Corps decided to partner with Junior Rank, and I think that in a career, there are defining moments for all of us, and for me, this was one of those defining moments. So what we essentially did is we partnered with this organization, Junior Rank, who I think is an exceptional organization, who goes out and they work with some of the most talented kids in the, in the uh, country. Where I saw an, uh, an opportunity to help there is I saw the shared values that we have. So the opportunity to work with them and to force multiply what we believe so strongly to be uh, key to success, both inside and outside the uniform, uh, led me to believe that we could make a difference together. So we, we take a personal interest in making young men better citizens. This was just an opportunity to kind of further that, that uh, goal. When you look at what it takes to be a United States Marine, and I've been one for 31 years, and when I saw the criteria of what it takes to be one of you sitting in this room this morning, in this place, going to play in a bowl game this afternoon, when I saw the criteria and I saw the connection that what it takes to be a Marine, you have to be mentally, morally, and physically qualified. And when I look at what the criteria was for you to be a part of this program, not only your amazing physical and athletic abilities, but your academic excellence and your strong moral foundation. I was absolutely compelled to be here today, and there's no other place that I'd rather be today than right here amongst some of the greatest young athletes and great young Americans that this nation has. 
says, listen, if you are not performing in the classroom, if you are not a solid citizen in your community, then we don't need you to be here. The United States Marine Corps says we make Marines, we win America's battles, and we, pro and we return productive citizens to society. And so then we're saying, we're saying the same thing. We want the lives that we touch to better the nation, uh, not just in football, not just in the military, but in the common, uh, in the common citizen, or citizenry of our nation, being here uh, for the Semper Fidelis Bowl and, uh, and participating in the junior rank camps is not about young people becoming Marines. Understand that we may come and participate and there may not be one young person that chooses to be a Marine, and that's okay. But we want those young people to look upon this time later when they're successful doing other things and say my life was changed because I had an encounter with United States Marines and that's why we're here. I don't care if you're the starting quarterback, you're the fastest receiver on the squad, or you got 60 people down here watching because I'm more concerned about what we represent than how fast the ball flies. That's why we're different. And we're going to continue to be that way. Today you are divided into the East and the West, but you are one team. Make no mistake about that. You are Simple Fidelis All-Americans. When you all leave here, 
You will go to colleges across this nation and battle for your colleges. But what I expect you to do today is to play this game intensely, but with discipline. All right? Personal fouls are caused by a lack of discipline because you allow yourself to get wrapped up in emotion. Fighting somebody on the campus is caused by a lack of discipline because you allow emotion to overcome you. Be disciplined, gentlemen. Have a spirited contest, but a disciplined contest so that you can all walk away from here and be ready to go forward and accomplish great things. You got that? Yes, sir. That's great. Well, I mean, you know, you, you earn revenue from camps and you sell t-shirts and that kind of stuff, but, you know, I wanted Junior Rank to be different. Um, you know, we're not going to charge $500, $600, $700 for an event. There's so many athletes that can't afford anything near that and really, quite frankly, shouldn't have to pay that to get an opportunity, you know, to get a look or for a college to see them. So our, our goal, or at least our strategy anyway, is to keep our prices real low to provide a high level of instruction and a great level of opportunity and hopefully partners or sponsors will say hey listen that's an organization that I want to partner with we believe in what they're doing one of the things that we believe in is passing on a discount to the parents you know our our charge for our camps are under two hundred dollars um, and you're getting the same amount of coaching that you would probably get at some of the other camps that are out here I don't think junior ranks about the money I hope that they are hugely successful I hope they make tons of money but I don't think Sean would sacrifice any of the goodwill for the money and I think that's unusual I don't see I don't think you see a lot of that out there where they're going to give up on the dollar for the kid. Yeah they pay for everything like they pay for the plane ticket, the hotel, the food basically that's all you got to do bring clothes out here. Um, you can look at our prices and see you know we, you're not going to we're not making a quick dollar off of these kids we really want to um, welcome as many as we can and to affect as many as we can. So it's really about getting through to them rather than making a quick buck. Not one kid gets turned away because of finance. And I know that every kid gets his chance and gets his opportunity. Um, that's a good feeling to me. Uh, I think having those kids get that opportunity is great. And who knows, that kid that may get turned away from by somebody else maybe the kid that makes a difference down the road. And, and I can tell you this, uh, Mike Tomlin from the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, who's now the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, had went through a similar situation. And at one time, he didn't, have, he didn't even have cleats. And uh, there's a gentleman out of Virginia that ran a camp, gave him a pair of cleats, let him in at a free camp. And now that affected him for his life. It changed his whole life. And, uh, and now you look at the end result, here's a guy that's running the Pittsburgh Steelers. He goes back and trains kids in Virginia, a coach from the NFL, because the, the, the gentleman that helped him changed his life. They flew me out here, they paid for everything. Um, it's been a great experience. It's, I can't say enough about how much uh, I've learned a lot and grew up a lot just being around these guys. Junior Rank is the reason why I'm here. Um, if, it, if it wasn't for uh, Junior Rank and, and Sean Barry, I, I wouldn't be here now. As you probably know, there's not too many people here that are injured. And um, if they are, then they came here and they got injured. But me, I was injured um, at the end of the, the, my season, my senior season. And uh, Junior Rank still allowed for me to come out and, and to help. And, and to them, I'm, I'm very grateful to them for it. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. There is not one, not one ounce of loss in terms of the credibility with what we're coaching. When you think about the guys that we have coaching these young men, I mean, they're some of the greatest guys to ever play the football game ever. And they're not just guys with a name. They're guys that actually can coach and teach and care. We have the best coaches in the business, to be honest with you. They have experience on all different levels. They work for different companies who actually do some of the same things that we do. You know, I think the goal for us is to continue to grow and to build uh, you know our model and so it becomes more attractive to corporations than necessarily individuals that we want to try to drag a lot of money out of their pockets. When, um, when Brett Cooper invited me over to the Miami campus, he said just come on over take a look see what we like. I got there and I saw the Marines there. I saw the drill instructors and I spent long enough in the Marine Corps to know the difference between a Marine and a Marine that's either come from the field, come from the fleet, what we call, and the drill field. And 
watching them just interact with the kids, watching them, you know, I thought it was great. So we went through the first day, my, my kids participated in the camp, I'm watching, you know, and it's, it's a great program. On our way home, I'm talking to my kids, I said, hey guys, we're getting a late start tomorrow, you can sleep in an hour later, we'll wake up and we'll go. And my oldest said, he goes, Dad, no, we want to go early. I'm like, well, you can sleep a little bit. No, Dad, they're having a prayer service in the morning. I'm like, you want to go to the prayer service? He goes, yes. Now, my kids go to Catholic schools, we're Catholic, and I drag them to get them to go to church. And, but for them to, on their own, take the initiative to want to go to a prayer service, you know, first that hit me. Something had to hit them to get them motivated to go there. And then we attended and Sean came out. It was a non-denominational service. And it was just more, rather than religion, but just more about core values, talking about you know, how we need to be, how as young men, how we need to act and carry ourselves. And as adults and leaders and mentors, and what we need to do, which, you know, that it sold me. This is where I wanna be. And you know, I've been thanking Sean every day because this is my dream job right here is being a part of junior rank in the Marine Corps, the Semper Fidelis Bowl. I think for anybody that knows me personally, um, this is all a ministry. Um, it's why I got into this. Uh, you know, I used to wonder why God didn't make me a greater player. I mean, I had dreams and visions of winning a Heisman Trophy and, you know, I wanted to be the man on campus and the great guy and I wasn't any of, of those things. I, you know. Uh, all the success that was in my mind was just in my mind, but I had a passion and a desire for it. And so um, as I got older and I realized that life was really much more about purpose, kind of what you're created for, uh, than necessarily what you want to do, um, I promised God then that I would try to build an organization that would really help young men try to find their purpose. Go figure out what it is that God wants you to do and be great at that. Uh, and so. At our events, um, you know, while non-denominational and certainly optional, we give young men the opportunity to fellowship with us, to just learn, hey, here are some of the things that make us different, and, and I'm not shy about, you know, my Christianity or my faith in saying I think that there is a direct correlation and connection to God's grace and the, and the wonderful things that, that, that a young man can get to experience in his life, and I share that openly, and I'm un unapologetic for it because I think that, um, at least for me anyway, um, it's been the key in um, making my life completely fulfilled. There isn't one Marine who hasn't put on the eagle globe and anchor, who didn't find him or herself looking in the mirror saying, how in the world am I going to live up to the reputation of the Marine Corps? There is not one person of faith who hasn't examined him or herself throughout their spiritual and spiritual journey and say, what in the world can God do with a person like me? Sean's story is a perfect example. But if you think that you have been selected by this team, or by God for that matter, based solely on your abilities, think again. Because you missed the point of playing ball in the first place. The people that brought you here are standing by you. The teammates that share your jersey, who have withstood the rigors of practice and training, they stand with you. You are not alone in this. You share those characteristics with your teammate, and if you don't have it together as a team, then you don't have it together at all. So I was a pretty good high school player, but I wasn't near the caliber of talent that you guys were. But I had this passion in my heart, like in my mind, I was like you guys. I was the all-American guy. I mean, I was, I was, I was going to be that guy. Everybody was going to look, and everybody was going to cheer, and everybody was going to celebrate. And I didn't do any of the things that you guys did. When I got to college, I hung out, and I partied, and I hung out some more, and I partied, and I tried to hurry up and become eligible, and I studied real hard and tried to do all these things and try to make myself eligible. And, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. Folks really didn't care that much because I wasn't a blue chip. I didn't come from some five-star game, and, and everybody looking at me, they kind of barely knew who I was, so they didn't care. Because when they didn't care, I didn't care. And so I started going through life like that. If you didn't pay attention to me, Doc, I'd get over any way I could. 
If I could skip out on the test, I would. If I could skip out on class, I would. If I could skip out on both, double double. Right? And then it was time for life. Like college went by that fast. So here I am after college, I'm like, man, I ain't think about studying, so I don't know what I'm gonna do for work. And I'm blessed, man. You guys hear me all the time. Every time, every session, you hear me talk about my wife. The reason why I'm so indebted to my wife is because the only thing I did right up until that point was ask her to marry me. Only thing I did right. And so then as I became a man and started to work and find a job, I actually had a pretty good corporate career going, but was kind of empty. With that, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to, was going to do it. But so I'm going through life, just kind of going through the motions, still haven't identified my purpose. What's in this cup? Huh? Liquid, what kind of liquid? Coffee. Coffee. What flavor coffee? Jordan Diamond, what flavor coffee is it? Huh? Regular? Nope. French vanilla. French vanilla, what you got? Decaf. Decaf. No. <laughs> <laughs> what flavor is it? Coconut. Who said mocha? Raise your hand if you said mocha. Who, who said mocha? Who said mocha? I said coconut. Caravan. Wrong. Yeah, you said cappuccino? You're as wrong as the others. <laughs> you say there's nothing in a cup. You know what? He's right. There's nothing in the cup. But you know why there's nothing in the cup? Because I didn't put anything in there. So if you were going to ask somebody what's in your cup, you can only ask the person that's responsible for putting something in the cup. And so if you want to go figure out what God's meant you to be, don't ask anybody else. Don't ask your friends, don't ask your neighbors, don't ask the people in your school, don't ask the guys with the pants sagging off their butt. Ask the person that you created you to be what you're intended to be. And that's the only person that can tell you. But go figure out what your purpose is and strive for that and not for ESPN, not for, you know, the, 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 the glory and the acclaim and all that kind of stuff. Because God never promised you none of that. That might not be your intention, Vinny. I know you like to play ball. I know what kind of young man you are. But I also know that young men look at you. God might have something totally different. So for me, I was telling you my story. I had all these dreams about being this great football player. But God never wanted that for me. And so what I was hoping that you would get out of this week was that it's so much more than just about the football. Because if it was just about football talent, after the game was over, all of you would be irrelevant. And this game would be irrelevant. And nothing that we're doing would be important. And nothing would matter. And this would have been a good vacation. And you got a couple Facebook shots out of it. And I saw some of y'all little girls. You know, maybe you got a couple of phone numbers out of it. But that would have been it. But if you go figure out what the real purpose is behind you being here, why were you selected amongst hundreds of thousands of football players across the country? I'm just submitting to you that maybe God had a bigger purpose, like for me. If he can take a guy that rushes for 800 yards a senior year in high school, scored seven touchdowns, loved his way into a football scholarship, that he didn't maximize his potential, and he lets me get an opportunity and be blessed enough to do all this, to meet with 500 of the best athletes in the nation, and have Chase Field in the stadium, and opportunity for the Marine Corps. If God can take a nobody and do this, what in the world do you think he can do with you? Remember that it's about giving back to somebody else. Remember that you're making an impact on somebody else. Remember, and this is why we do this, young guys, we pair you with the older guys that you see over here because we want these guys to be your role models. So that when you walk down the street and you see these young men and how they carry themselves, that that's what you emulate, not what you see the world doing and not what you see everybody else doing. People will say all the time, don't be a follower, be a leader. But it's okay to follow things that are good. Um, you know, when they when they, when they score a touchdown, 
I want them to feel like they did a good job, but when they see a young man that has served our country, given an arm or a leg or a limb, or sacrificed his, you know, three or four or five years of his life, I want them to be able to understand and to separate. This is an athletic event, and this is something that's critical and important to life. You know, this is a, a, a an exciting time, but this is somebody to be revered and honored. Um, you know, I tell kids all the time, I love to watch pro football and college football, and when a guy scores a touchdown, I jump up and cheer, but I don't call him a hero. I call him a guy that did a great job at catching or running or throwing a football. Um, when I see a guy that served our country faithfully, um, without so much as a thank you, that's a hero. Young men, we talk about fighting and being battle-tested and courage. And let me share with you that none of us have a concept of what that really means. When you think about sacrifice, which most of us are only willing to do just a bit of, you have to wonder about somebody who's willing to fight for your freedom, to give their life so that you can continue yours without so much as a thank you. But I can bet you tonight we are absolutely going to say thank you to Marine Guillermo Tejada. to come to my mind this year that had a tremendous or very special impact on Greg Garman from Erie, Pennsylvania, you know, recovered from stomach cancer. Um, great personality, great kid, great athlete, um, just a great spirit of, and energy about him. He's one. Uh, Diane Brown, a kid out of Phoenix who, you know, couldn't even afford to attend our camp, you know, had to borrow a pair of shoes and came out and ended up earning himself a scholarship as another. But, I, when I think about what the vision is for junior rank sports, um, there's a young man from Miami by the name of Donald Van Manning who's playing in our high school American game this week. And at our camp in Miami, I got a chance to meet Donovan. I knew he was one of the top uh, defensive backs in the state and, and a small, slight guy, but a guy that we you know, were really interested in terms of being in, in the game. And his coach, Telly Lockett, is a guy that coaches for us and we trust implicitly. And, you know, went on and on about this young guy's talents, but we, when he went on and on about his talents, it took him a long time to get to the football. He talked about what kind of leader he was and what kind of hard work and determination, but I think the thing that most engendered me um, to, to, to Donovan, or at least gra made me gravitate to who he was, was when I got a chance to meet with him and walk with him, I took him around the track to just talk, and I just wanted to get to know him. And he said, Mr. Barry, I want to be uh, an engineering major. And I said, well, son, what, 
what school are you going to play for? And he said, well, Virginia Tech offered me a football scholarship. And I said, oh, that's great. You know, what about Miami and Florida and Florida State? You're down here already. They didn't. He said, sir, they didn't recruit me early on. He said, they're recruiting me now, but then they weren't interested in me. And I said, well, why do you think that they weren't interested in you? And he said, well, it's the very same reason I think I'm sticking with Virginia Tech. And I said, well, tell me what you mean. He said, you know, I'm 165 pounds, which isn't the biggest for a high school cornerback. And at 165 pounds, Virginia Tech offered me a scholarship. And the other schools passed, I think, then because they were afraid I just wasn't big enough. And he said, sir, the reason I'm 165 pounds is because my, fam my family can only afford one meal a day. We're hungry. And he said, and I'm hungry. He said, so to have a school like Virginia Tech with one of the best engineering programs in the country believe in me makes me loyal to them. And he said, sir, when I get to college and I get involved in a meal plan, I don't think I'll be weighing 165 pounds anymore. And I'm going to pay back all those schools who passed on me when they thought I was too small. That, to me, is what junior rank sports is all about. A guy that's focused academically, that has a hunger and a drive athletically, and has a moral fiber that tells him to be a loyal, caring young man. I mean, that's a guy, when I think about a poster child, if you would, I'd say Donald Manning. Donovan Manning's the guy. First off, I like to thank God because he gave me the talent and the brains to get on track and get on my right track to be an athlete that I am. And I thank my mom and my aunt and my uncle for pushing me to be the man that I am now. I'm just proud of my husband. I, I am proud and watching his dream come true is, is a phenomenal thing. As well, going to the Cardinals game was awesome. Um, Going to the Fiesta Bowl and rolling out the flag was awesome. Uh, all the support and love that everybody's given us is, is a good feeling. It just gives you more confidence going into college. I love coming out here, watching practices, seeing the coaches, the, the front office people, the other moms and dads who are involved. It's just a really nice atmosphere. It's something I look forward to, and I'm, I'm just so honored that my son could be a part of it. I think one of the things that stood out the most to me was majority of you know the conversations I had with the generals. You know, people who out here are risking their lives every day for us and, you know, taking time out of their schedule to come and talk to me. I mean, I'm just another citizen. People see me as a big-time football player, but I'm just another person. You know, I really love this. I really love this whole experience here. And, um, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, junior Rank, you guys have done a great job. Uh, I, I believe that one day I will be here working with you guys after my um, football career. And at Semper Fi, always faithful. That's really it. For some advice to the younger kids, you know, if you have a chance to do this, I mean, I most definitely think that you should come out to the junior rank because just like it has changed my life, it may have changed yours. <laughs>